Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehre Bagga and today I will be playing the final blitz on Lee Chess and during the game I will try to be as instructive as possible like always, making sure that there is something to be taken away as a learning that helps you improve your game to the next level. Now before I start with the game, I request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I am posting up daily without a miss. So yeah, let's start with the game and see how it goes. Got the white pieces and play the London system setup starting with pawn to d4. Bishop comes out on f4, developing the bishop, tax by bishop early in the game. Playing pawn forward to e3, trying to solidify the center. And then we can go ahead with the knight on f3. Bishop on d3 can be exchanged here. And I take back with the queen. And that's what happens. So I'll take. It's willing to exchange the square bishop as well, but I can go ahead with the knight. Now maybe the knight can come here and then play pawn forward can be one of the tactics by my opponent. Yep, looks like that is the case. Um, so I think I should be just saving my bishop here for now. So that if pawn forward, I can just move my knight backwards. Doesn't happen though, so I can go ahead with my knight trying to go for exchange. Generally, you will see pawn to f5 in this case, trying to defend the knight. So if, if the exchange happens, opponent takes with the f pawn and opens up the file for the attack as well. Which again doesn't happen. So I'll take here. And if my opponent does take, I can take back with the queen. So he loses a pawn. And now the bigger threat is to take on the pawn next. And if he tries to get something in between, that can be troublesome as well can actually win extra pawn by some deflection technique and take on the bishop next. So this looks like a nice beginning already. We are in the 11th move. Okay, I uh, have to defend this first of all. So pawn forward saves it all. This doesn't bother me because I can take back with the pawn. Do I actually need to take it is the question because I can come here, which would mean I'm attacking his queen and his bishop at the same time. So I don't need to waste my moves there. But I'm attacking a couple of things. And if bishop takes, that can also be nice. That attacks the rook next. Of course, we can cancel any time. Okay, so now I think bishop takes works more. I can still take with the knight and be undefended. Like, this, there can be still discoveries with this knight. Now I can take it anywhere and that would be attacking my, the open screen. Hmm. Where do I take my knight now? Let's go here so that I can take on the pawn as well next. This is a discover attack on the queen. So that's why I took with the knight. Okay, he's trying to play smart there. But I can play pawn forward and just spoil the smartness. I can just take on the pawn as well. This also works. Now if he tries to take on the pawn next, I can castle. Casting is safer option here. He can take another pawn. That's it. I can take his knight, spoil his pawn structure further. Or maybe he takes with the queen and exchanges the queen. That's also advantage to me because I'm plus two already. I think I should be exchanging queens and make this pawn further vulnerable. Okay. Let's get the rook active. It's the end game now. Stop this from moving forward maybe. Or just play, play pawns forward maybe next first and then double up. Okay, now I should stop it because it's on a dark square. And my bishop is dark square bishop which can come here eventually. I can double up here. And he will also double up mostly. Trying to defend the pawn but that's not going to work. And why so? Because I'm going to play pawn forward, and I'm going to play pawn forward, and then I get my bishop attacking the pawn. So eventually, I win. How is the check actually? Uh, not that great. Let's go here, and I'm winning the pawn. I can play pawn forward, he goes up. Can be one thing. Or maybe I can just give a check first. So that he goes back, and I can play pawn forward next. So that everything is covered. I can go up as well. Uh, maybe pawn forward again by him. G5. No. Okay. 
I'll take here, taking control of a lot of stuff slowly and gradually. If he moves the rook, he loses a pawn straight away because I have a couple of attackers. If he tries to do something silly, then uh, uh, bishop come come in, for, in into the picture quickly. Okay. Um, I think I should be doubling up here. No other better move. Just trying to take on the pawn and take it from there. Have to be careful because there can be last rank weakness and that can lead to my bishop losing. But yeah, thankfully my opponent resigns. Don't have to go through the troubles of thinking over. So that was quick. 4.85 eventually in the advantage. That's why my opponent resigns here. Just in case you were wondering why. So start off at d4. I played d5. Uh, bishop on f4 trying to develop the bishop early. Dark square bishop. Which is generally a light, a weaker square, a weaker piece for uh, the white pieces. So, trying to take it out because otherwise, if I play pawn e3, I'm just making, I have to think where the bishop goes. What do we do with the bishop? And unless you are making optimi optimizing the use of all your pieces, you are probably going to uh, feel a bit lack uh, in your attack. So, I played uh, bishop first and then pawn to e3, opened up the uh, light square bishop on f5. I went with knight f3, uh, pawn to e6. I tried to exchange bishops, which does happen. I can take with the pawn. Uh, so center pawns can be doubled up, but then I can go for a pawn break and quickly uh, fix that as well after playing queen on e2, so that, of course, the knight doesn't take. But instead, I took with the queen, which is also okay idea. Here, my pawn uh, opponent plays bishop to d6, and I go with knight e5. Open doesn't take, but plays knight to e4, and then I got my bishop back. Now, the idea behind this was... Uh, just in case this trade doesn't happen and say I go with the knight uh, over here, uh, first thing my opponent can take on the knight, I take back and then I can expect a move like pawn forward as well, where I have to go back and once my opponent does take the bishop, I am taking back with the f pawn and that is kind of a double pawn which you generally don't want to have because yes, of course you can castle either side of the board and then go aggressive but meanwhile your opponent will also castle say some exchanges happen, you castle over here, open gets to castle as well and that's a solid middle game again, which can proceed either ways. Yes, the center file is opened up and you can quickly take advantage of it, but rather uh, go for the pawn attack from both the side of the board uh, and then just storm. Pawn storms are very nice. But instead I went with bishop on g3, my open doesn't take here. And I went with knight to d2, offering exchange, and den denies that, which was the worst move, because after I take, he has to take back and loses a pawn. Not only loses a pawn, this is attacking his other pawn as well now. And he plays queen a5. Uh, I just played pawn to c3, so no effect of that. And then he takes a pawn instead. Of course, I can uh, have some other stuff here. I can take on the pawn as well. Uh, but the best move in this situation was to play knight over to c4. Now that comes with a fork on both the pieces and he has to make a choice where to take his queen and the best move was queen going to c6. Now computer suggesting you can take on the bishop with the bishop because after you take and say opponent takes on knight you're going to take his rook and he takes back and you have a decent advantage here because it's your next turn is yours and you can take a pawn and the rook will eventually be trapped. Yes queens can be exchanged but if you see that's a knight and a rook versus a lot of pawns and a couple of rooks. So that's going to be losing as well. But instead in the game, I took on with the knight first so that I can have discoveries. And then I can take on a pawn here, but I just went back and tried to tank the queen. Queen goes there. I take on the pawn and then he takes on the center pawn. On Sorry, not the center pawn, but b2. And I castle here. He takes another pawn. Still, I'm in advantage. I can get my rook active, but I just went with knight exchanging first, trying to just simplify the stuff. He offers the queen, so do I take it and then get my rook active on the c file. So does he, pawn forward. And then, um, oh yes, I can straight away play this. I just missed this move because if he tries to exchange here, I take the pawn. Yes, he can have a double attack, but then I'll just move away and he has to take and I take back and this is winning completely. But instead in the game, I went with doubling up the rooks first. He goes to double up as well. Then yes, the right move, e4, he moves ahead. Oh, this is also a nice tactic which can be done. I take, he takes, 
I take and he takes and then our uh, bishop comes in and once you save your king, rook is gone and then the pawn is hanging once you save it. Uh, we're just going to go ahead with the king eventually and just try and take control of all the stuff. So that's completely winning as well. So it was actually over once we exchanged the queens of the board after having a couple of pawns in the advantage. Tries to centralize everything but then I get give him a check to push him backwards and play pawn forward. And then he has to exchange eventually, which doesn't help him. Uh, I double up and then he resigns because it's five in favor of white already. I hope you like the video. Do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now. And yeah, see you tomorrow again with an exciting video. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.